Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. I'm grateful to you for granting this important adjournment debate this evening. Picture the scene, Madam Deputy Speaker, a beautiful historic town whose origins date back to the Roman days. Small businesses lining both sides of the street, traditional architecture providing a link to the area's local history. This is Toaster, at the heart of my South Northamptonshire constituency. It is an idyllic scene until the traffic order. starts. And Madam Deputy Speaker, I'm sitting not six feet from the Right Honourable Lady and I'm unable to hear what she's saying to the House. Uh, the Right Honourable Gentleman is absolutely correct. I have asked for members to behave in a decent and respectful way. I think we have it a little bit more quiet. Dame Andrea Leadsom. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. I was describing Toaster, a beautiful town in the heart of my South Northamptonshire constituency. It is an idyllic scene until the traffic starts. Most days, and sometimes all day, cars queue down the A5 Watling Street, which is the high street through Toaster. Buses cannot pass the cars parked either side. And worst of all, whenever the M1 or the M40 are up the creek, which can happen at any point during the day or night, we have HGVs squeezing their way through the narrow gap between parked cars. They often have to drive onto the pavement with air brakes wheezing and tooting their horns to each other to signify, you first, no, you first. When my son was 12, I will never forget the day we were walking past the town hall where the pavement narrows to only two feet wide. He dropped a ball into the road and leant out to catch it just as an HGV came past. I grabbed him, but if I hadn't, that would have been the end of him. HGV drivers have little concern for busy families with pushchairs or elderly residents crossing the street with walking sticks. The only crossroads in the town is at the historic Saracen's Head pub, mentioned in Charles Dickens's Pickwick Papers. Back in the day, as a coaching inn, it would have been a beautiful stop-off point for travellers. But now, having a pint in its pub garden is akin to having a beer alongside several gallons of diesel fumes. This road is unbelievably unsuitable for the size and volume of traffic that is using it, and quite apart from the obvious dangers for cyclists and pedestrians, <laughs> the traffic is having an appalling impact on toasters' air quality, noise levels and quality of life for residents. Now, Toaster has been in need of a ring road for probably 50 years, and since becoming MP for South Northamptonshire in 2010, resolving this issue has been one of my main local priorities. The beauty of the town drew the eye of Persimmon Homes, who agreed to build a relief road for the town, amongst other things, in return for planning permission for over 2,000 new homes on the edge of Toaster. Now, Madam Deputy Speaker, I am no NIMBY, and nor are my constituents. The new housing has been welcomed, and new residents are enjoying the lovely independent retail offer of Toaster, as well as the stunning walks through parkland that used to belong to the Eastern Neston Estate. However, as always seems to be the case in these situations, the houses are being built at breakneck speed, yet somehow, after 12 years of me beating down the doors of national highways, the local councils, of DFT and of Persimmon, we have still only managed to achieve a road to nowhere. I have a meeting with them all together once a month, and although everyone is keen to get the job finished, you can imagine that the sparks occasionally fly. Now, the relief road will ultimately join the A5 with the A43 as a bypass to the town centre. And after years of negotiation, DFT have agreed that signage will push traffic out of the town and onto the relief road.
and there is now a new consultation underway to improve the look and feel of Toaster Town Centre and to put in place measures for traffic calming. So the future for Toaster is promising, but this happy vision of the future is still probably the best part of two years or more away. In the meantime, the centre of Toaster was declared an air quality management area as long ago as in September 2005. And since then, pollution levels have got steadily far worse and they are currently well below the target level set by government. West Northamptonshire Council, in fact, wrote to all residents living on Watling Street and in the surrounding areas in March 2021 about air quality reminding them that their properties fall within an air quality management area and that they may wish to reduce the amount of air pollution that they're exposed to. Well, I'm absolutely certain they all agree. One of the specific measures proposed by the Council was to keep windows closed adjacent to the road during peak traffic periods and to ventilate homes as much as possible from windows away from the primary traffic route. Well, you can imagine how those residents felt about that advice, Madam Deputy Speaker. Quite rightly, many constituencies contacted me to ask why the help in the form of the relief road isn't being expedited. But they also wanted to know what we can do in the meantime to protect local people from the damage being done to their lungs. I'll be delighted. I thank the Right Honourable Lady for, for giving way. Um, and on that particular point, um, levels of asthma, levels of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease are also higher uh, in my part of Devon than the average across the rest of England. Um, and congestion in Columpton would be eased by a relief road and also the reinstatement of a railway station. So and I wonder if the, the Right Honourable Member would agree that, that railway stations and relief roads can improve air quality well, of course, I entirely agree with the Honourable Gentleman, and I do wish him success in his campaign for a relief road. But the purpose of this evening, Madam Deputy Speaker, is to talk about Toaster, the beautiful Roman town of Lactodorum, which um, is the subject of the debate and is a beautiful place that could be so much more beautiful if we could only get the issue of the relief road sorted and, most importantly, the issue of relief in the meantime um, as far as possible dealt with by the Department. So in this adjournment debate this evening, I would like to ask my Right Honourable Friend, the Minister, the following questions. Firstly, what further action can be taken by national highways to stop HGVs using the A5 Watling Street until such time as the relief road is built, which could still be up to two years away? Secondly, can my right honourable friend confirm National Highway's intention is to introduce a 7.5 tonne weight restriction through the town centre once the relief road is open? Thirdly, what other measures does she propose to help improve air and noise quality in Toaster before the relief road is open? Fourthly, can the programme of signage and traffic calming that is being consulted on by National Highways as part of the improvements to Toaster Town Centre be expedited to tackle these problems as soon as the relief road is open rather than waiting until 2025 as is currently being consulted on? Fifthly, the threat of proposed new developments particularly of logistics centres and warehousing from a large number of new planning applications in South Northamptonshire will massively exacerbate the existing traffic congestion problems. So I'd like to ask my right honourable friend what further action can be taken to stop overdevelopment and to ensure that planners take into account the full aggregate impact on traffic of various individual development projects that have been proposed. And then my final question is what consideration has been taken for the cumulative impact, the cumulative impact of many very significant infrastructure projects, such as the Toaster Relief Road itself, combined with 
HS2 and its desire for road closures and traffic movements, as well as the strategic rail freight interchange at Northampton Gateway, what consideration is being given to the aggregate impact of those projects on traffic and air quality in the local area, and what action can be taken to reduce the impact? Madam Deputy Speaker, knowing how diligent the Minister is and the commitment she has to improving local infrastructure, I look forward to her response and for some reassurance that I can provide to my constituents. Thank you. Minister. Thank you very much, Madam Deputy Speaker. And I'd like to thank uh, my right honourable friend for providing us with such a vivid picture of the idyllic town of Toaster. Uh, at the same time as raising the very important issue of congestion and air quality that affects the residents uh, of her town. I know that she's been such a staunch campaigner on this subject for a number of years, supporting her local community. And like her, the government takes air quality and its effects extremely seriously. Although we have achieved significant reductions in air pollution, it remains the largest environmental risk to public health in the UK. And we are taking a range of actions to drive down air pollution across all sectors, including on emissions from transport, domestic burning, industry and agriculture. And in these difficult times, we are working responsibly as a government to balance this action with other key priorities, such as achieving net zero and managing economic burdens on businesses and individuals. I hope the Right Honourable Member for South North Northamptonshire won't mind if I address at the beginning some of the measures that we are taking nationally. Uh, last November, we passed the Environment Act, under which we have consulted on two stretching new targets for concentrations of fine particulate matter, the pollutant most damaging to human health. We know that in many cases it is bespoke a local intervention that is needed to tackle local air quality issues, which is why the Government have worked to support and empower local authorities to take action. This includes allocating £883 million under our NO2 programme to support local authorities to develop and implement measures to tackle nitrogen dioxide exceedances in the shortest possible time. It also includes the money paid to local authorities through our Air Quality Grant Scheme, which helps English councils develop and implement measures to benefit schools, businesses and communities and reduce the impact of polluted air on people's health. Since 2010, we have awarded more than £42 million across almost 500 projects. This year, we more than doubled the funding paid to local authorities through the scheme to £11.6 million. National highways and local authorities already work together to improve local air quality. But in order to formalise this collaboration, the Government has designated national highways as a relevant public authority through the Environment Act. And as a relevant public authority, national highways will be required to collaborate with local authorities to tackle areas of poor air quality identified alongside the motorways and trunk roads within each local authority to help ensure that local air quality objectives are met and subsequently maintained. This will provide greater clarity and cohesion to their partnership with local authorities in responding to air quality issues. The statutory instrument designating national highways as a relevant public authority will be laid this autumn. So, turning now to the specific local issues raised by my right honourable friend, the member for Southamptonshire, the Air Quality Action Plan for the Watling High Street Toaster Air Quality Management Area, updated recently in 2021, sets out the measures the Council plan to take to improve air quality. And as she's talked about, the most significant measure to sustain air quality improvements will be the proposed A5, A43 New Road, which will provide an alternative route for some traffic rather than through the centre of Toaster. This new road is largely developer-funded, but National Highways have made available a contribution of £3.8 million to enable an earlier start to the construction. 
Uh, unlike my right honourable friend, I am very keen to see this road completed as soon as possible to deliver the important benefits which she has outlined. I know that National Highways have been working closely with West Northamptonshire Council to support a solution that will help alleviate the traffic and air quality problems in Toaster. And as my right honourable friend discussed with the previous Roads Minister, this will involve installations of signs to direct traffic via the new road, as well as a complementary programme of traffic calming measures, which she talked about. Uh, as she mentioned, these actions have already been subject to a public consultation, which closed on the 11th of September this year. And I know that national highways are in the process of analysing the feedback from the consultation to further inform design development. I know that she has vigorously lobbied on behalf of her constituents to introduce a weight restriction and a speed reduction through Toaster High Street. Uh, and she asked me a particular question about that in the 7.5-tonne uh, limit. And I can confirm that a 7.5-tonne limit uh, was included within the options in the recent public consultation. Um, but introducing a weight limit would be dependent on the provisions of the new road as a more suitable road for HGVs. And exceptions will need to be in place to enable businesses along the high street to receive deliveries. As my right honourable friend uh, will be pleased to know, a range of measures being proposed by national highways, uh, working alongside West Northamptonshire Council, will bring many benefits. The main objectives for the scheme include reducing the impact of air and noise pollution on the surrounding environment, making Toaster High Street an attractive place to visit, improving accessibility to Toaster Town, and above all, preserving Toaster's rich history and identity. My right honourable friend mentioned the new road is being constructed by Person and Homes, and they have assured National Highways the road will be completed in the summer of 2024. Uh, she asked me specifically about the timing then of the signage and the calming measures, and I'd like to reassure her that National Highways have agreed to deliver both the signage and the traffic calming measures on Toaster High Street as soon as the new road is completed. I also want to respond to the questions raised by uh, my right honourable friend on what further action can be taken by National Highways to stop HGVs using the A5 uh, street. And I can understand uh, the current frustration for her constituents when the A5 is used as, as a diversion route uh, following accidents on the nearby M1, as well as during the ongoing works to the motorway. Uh, I can ass assure her that these M1 improvement works, which are due to be completed early next year, will not only add extra capacity on the M1, but will also substantially reduce the frequency of the A5 route being used as a diversion for the M1. Uh, my right honourable friend also raises the issue of new developments in South Northamptonshire, which will deliver immediate impacts of protecting and creating jobs improving livelihoods and supporting the long-term transformation of the local economy. Look, I acknowledge her views on how these developments exacerbate the existing traffic problems. I would like to reassure her that National Highways are a consultee for any planning applications that may impact the strategic road network. For any applications that impact that network, developers are required to undertake a series of cumulative assessments of traffic levels based on the requirements set out by the Department. Uh, impacts of individual schemes, once assessed, uh, may then require mitigation measures to be put in place, which would form part of any recommendation for approval. However, as she will know, any decision on whether to grant development consent or not uh, would be a matter for the Local Planning Authority. I appreciate the robust campaign led by the Council uh, and the efforts that my right honourable friend have, have done to protect local residents from poor air quality. And I'm pleased to see that the latest air quality annual status report conducted by South Northamptonshire Council in 2021 confirmed a continuous downward trend of nitrogen dioxide levels and all monitored sites in Toaster achieved legal compliance of NO2 levels in 2019. In closing, 
I am grateful to my right honourable friend for her perseverance to improve the lives of the residents in Toaster and for providing us with an opportunity to outline the steps we are taking to improve both the traffic situation and improve air quality in and around Toaster. Improving air quality across the nation is the key priority for this Government and I am committed to addressing it while supporting the economic growth that we so desperately need.